So when we're comparing properties of ionic and covalent compounds, we're going to look at several different physical properties. The first physical property that we're going to look at is melting point. And our ionic compounds have a high melting point. And our covalent compounds are going to have a low melting point. That means it's going to take a lot more energy, it's going to take a lot more heat in order to melt an ionic compound, whereas a covalent compound will either be a liquid at room temperature or it will melt very easily. The next thing that we're going to look at is conductivity. So an ionic compound is conductive in solution. That's because ionic compounds have metals in them. So remember, an ionic compound is a metal and a non-metal. So because it has a metal, that makes it conductive in solution. Covalent compounds, since covalent compounds are only non-metal elements, it is not conductive in solution. And something that's in common for both of them for conductivity is that neither of them are conductive as solids. The next thing that we're going to look at is boiling point. So this is similar to melting point, but instead of going from a solid to a liquid, we're looking at the temperature it needs to go from a liquid to a gas. And so ionic compounds have a high melting point. They also have a high boiling point. And then covalent compounds have a low melting point, and then they also have a low boiling point. So just like with melting point, it's going to take a lot more energy to make an ionic compound go from a solid to a liquid, and it's not going to take as much energy to go from a so or go from a liquid to a gas for a covalent compound. And then the last thing that we're going to look at are some of the other things that they have in common. So both of them are they both tend to look like um, white compounds as solids, so their appearance is similar. And then the other thing that they both have in common is that they both contain nonmetals. So covalent are nonmetals only, ionic has metals and nonmetals, and then both of them contain nonmetals. So if a compound contains a nonmetal, that's not just the only thing you can go off of to determine if it's ionic or covalent. Um, and then the last thing that we are going to look at is their solubility. So ionic compounds are all going to be soluble in water. Solubility means that they're going to dissolve. So all ionic compounds will dissolve in water. Now for covalent, some covalent compounds will dissolve in water and some covalent compounds won't. And that's something that we're gonna look at a little bit later in this unit if you're in honors. Um, so for covalent compounds, some will be soluble and some won't. So some are soluble in water. So if you know that something's going to dissolve, you can look at, it is likely an ionic, but not always, because some covalent compounds are soluble in water and some aren't. So those are the properties that we're gonna look at for both of them. Um, and then just a reminder, the ionic compounds are gonna contain metals and non-metals. Covalent compounds contain nonmetal elements only.